All right, hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Quickly look at uh, the concept of inverse of function. Okay, so now here we are saying that if you have a function f, you know, that goes from a domain x to y, then the function go going the, the opposite direction that is going from y to x is called the inverse of f. If that relation in the, anywhere in the first case what we have here is a relation so we are not yet sure if it's a function but we are saying that if this particular relation now turns to become a function then that function is the inverse of f so the inverse of f is represented with f of x sorry f inverse is written this way and of course you can write it as f inverse of x okay so now why are we making this condition here if okay the reason is because you can have a function that does not have an inverse okay a function whose uh, the opposite of it in this direction is not a function for instance um if we say that uh, remember we said that if you have a function this way uh, where here is your a and then let's say or let me call it x and then this is your y so we stated that uh, if you have let me use two elements here and let me use two here and uh, your a is mapped to one and b is mapped to one we said that this is possible and it is a function uh, okay so if this is our f and we decide to turn it the other way around so what it means is that this is will not, this will not be your y one two and this will be your uh, x a b now the so the implication is that you are having both uh, a and b coming to one all right and so but we are saying that if you have a function where one element is mapped to two different elements in the codomain that this is just a relation it is not a function so in this case even though x to y is a function you can clearly see that y to x is not a function okay that's why we have this condition but whenever you have a situation where x to y is a function and y to x is a function so that y to x function is called the inverse of x to y okay now we have few remarks to make here if a function has an inverse it is said to be what an invertible function that's the first one then the second one a function is only invertible if and only if it is bijective what's the mean of bijective uh, bijective function is a function that is injective remember we define injective function as a one-to-one -one function so it is injective and also subjective and i said that subjective function is an onto function this one is one to one and this one is onto okay so if a function is both injective and onto you say that it is what bijective so a function can only be uh, invertible can only have an inverse if it is bijective then thirdly a function if it is invertible then that inverse is unique unique means that every function has only one inverse you can never fi find two inverses for a particular function that is invertible. All right, so we're going to see examples of how to find the inverse of a given function. Okay, the first example here says that we should find the inverse of this function that is defined from R to R. And this is the function here. So solution. Okay, so we are giving a function f of x to be equal to 4x plus 7. Okay, so to find the inverse of this, please follow the steps. The first thing is substitute this f of x with letter y. You recall that we said that y is actually fun defined as function of x. So uh, is equal to 4x plus 7. So the next thing we need to do is make x the subject of the formula. And to do that, you're going to have y minus 7 is equal to 4x. And so next thing is divide both sides by 4. And when you do that, you will see that our x is equal to y minus 7 
all over four okay and so that's the next the second step and the final step is interchange x and y let your y come here and let your x come here and whatever you will get after that interchange becomes your uh, inverse your f inverse so if i do that interchange i'm going to now have x minus 7 over 4 and that is equal to my f inverse of x and this is your solution so you just have three simple steps Inter uh, make your f of x to be y and then make x the subject of the formula interchange your x and y and that gives you your f inverse and so this is just the solution and so we go to example two example two here is also the same process it says we should compute the inverse of this that's f inverse there is one here okay so uh, solution now the function is f of x uh, is equal to x plus one all over x minus one let's just quickly make this our y there is no need okay so we want to make y the subject sorry x the subject now cross multiply remember this is over one and so that's going to give us y into x minus one is equal to x plus one open this bracket you will have x y minus y is equal to x plus one remember our intention is to make x the subject of the formula so you take this x to the other side and that will give you x y that's we are collecting all the ones that have x and this coming here will become minus x is equal to this one coming here will become y plus one and so if you factorize x here you will have y minus one is equal to y plus one and uh, when you divide both sides by x sorry by y plus one sorry minus one this will go away and so our x alone will now be y plus 1 all over y minus 1. And so at this point, we can quickly then make x, sorry, interchange x and y. So wherever we see y, we replace it with x. And if we do that, we are going to have x plus 1 all over x minus 1 as our f, f inverse of x. And this is our solution. Okay, so you can see that this particular function has exactly the same inverse, as in the function is the same as its inverse. Okay, and then that's for two. So we go to example three. Example three says that we should find the inverse of this other function. So we are just using different types of functions to see how to do this. All right, so the first one here says that uh, we should find g inverse of uh, uh, g inverse and so first of all what is our g g is uh, g of x replace it with y that is equal to um square root of 2 plus 5 x now make x a subject so you have squared equal to 2 plus 5 that's if you square both sides the square root will go away so that gives us 2y minus 2 is equal to 5x now divide both sides by 5 if you do that uh, our x alone will be y squared minus 2 all over 5 so simply replace your y by x and that will give us x squared minus 2 all over 5 and this is equal to g inverse in this case we have g so we are looking for g inverse. So this is equal to g inverse of x. And that is the solution. Okay, and then the b part is asking us to now take a, co uh, a composition of the two. That's composition of g and its inverse. Okay, so let's look at that. We remember in our last video, we looked at what composition is all about. Please kindly check that video to see what we said there. But you can always follow us here. We said that composition here means g of g inverse of x. Okay. So meanwhile, our g of x is equal to this square root. Square root of 2 plus 5x. Okay. 
So now this is this means then that our g of g inverse of x is then going to be that means wherever we see x here, then we remove it and put uh, the value of g inverse, and our g inverse is the whole of this. So that means this is going to be the square root of 2 plus 5 multiplying x squared minus 2 all over 5. Okay, so at this point, this 5 will take away this 5. And so we are going to have, we are going to have the square root of, uh, this is 2 um, plus if we open this, we are going to have x squared minus 2. And now, of course, this will take away this. So you just have the square root of x squared. And this will take away the square. Therefore, our g composite, g inverse, is simply equal to x. Okay, so you discover that whenever you take a composition of a function and its inverse, is supposed to give you x if x is a variable you have there our last example here says that we should uh, solution okay so this a part says that we are giving this function f of x as equal to 2s cubed minus 4 and we are asked to find its inverse so replace this with y and then make x the subject. So to do this, we are going to have, take the minus 4 first, so you have plus 4, equal to 2x cubed. Divide both sides by 2. If you do that, you will have y plus 4 over 2. If you divide here by 2, you have only x cubed. And so take the cube of both sides. If you take the cube of both sides, this, uh, sorry, the cube root of both sides, so you are going to have the cube root of y plus 4 all over 2. And that's equal to, if you take the cube root of this side, you will have only x. And so that means that uh, our x is equal to... And so if we now interchange uh, the x and y, we are going to have the cube root of x plus 4 all over 2 and this is now our f inverse of x and that's the solution for the a part now the b part says that we should find the f inverse of 12 so this one is evaluation okay so f inverse of 12 meaning anywhere we see x in this f inverse we should replace it with 12 and so that's going to give us the cube root of 12 plus 4 all over 2. And that is going to give you <clears throat> the cube root of, this is 16 over 2 is 8. And the cube root of 8 is simply equal to 2. And that is the solution to the problem, which is where we are going to end for this video. So recall the three simple steps. Replace f of x with y. Make x the subject of the formula interchange your x and y variable and then whatever you have as your y becomes your uh, the inverse of the function you are looking for okay kindly subscribe to our youtube channel please do like comment and i beg you share this video to your friends who will need it and families thank you see you in our next video bye